Ja, men det är du! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> oh my. This world that we live in, what else is there to say? Um, there's a lot of, a lot of, let's say, paranoia about our government, and some of it is actually a little bit more coming out that it's actually legitimate to be a little bit afraid of our, uh, to draw connections that are seemingly unrelated. Um, things like the NSA and uh, the perhaps Common Core or the general education system as it is, uh, there's, there has been a, a deliberate dumbing down. And uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, maybe convey an idea to you for a moment. There's a teacher and there is a, a principal. And the principal walks into the empty classroom as the teacher is preparing his papers and the, this is what ensues. Mr. Johnson, your students seem to be having some problems with our uh, curriculum standards. Uh, sure, what is, what's that? Well, you see, a few of your students have A plus in their grades, and uh, we, can't, we can't have that. Uh, common Core standards dictate that uh, every child has to have a common core, hence the name. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, so what, what are you saying? What are you, what are you getting at here? Well. See, we need that. Kid, we need those children to have C's or at least C, at least C pluses. We can't have them being, <laughs> uh, you know. Otherwise, the children will start to get jealous, and uh, this is not this is not the kind of uh, education that we want for our children. We want them to be common, to have a common core. Um, wait a minute. So you're saying that you want me to? dumb them down? Uh, no, 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 I didn't say that. I just said that they need to have a common core. You see, the standards of education have been changed, Mr. Johnson. Um, I, I'm having a hard time with um, understanding exactly what it is you want me to do about this. <laughs> it's not that hard to get, Mr. Johnson. You just need to lower their grades to C or C+. Uh, we cannot have children thinking that they are better than the rest of the students. We're all equal, Mr. Johnson. We're all equal. Um, that may be the case generally, sir. We're all equal under the law, but... Uh, we're all different specifically, so I, I don't really see how it's going to improve the children's education to bring them to a common standard. <laughs> oh, Mr. Johnson, you just don't get it, do you? We're lowering the standards because we need to have a higher grade average for all the students. The average, Mr. Johnson, is what we're looking for, not the excellence of our students. In fact, we've already begun at the state level to reduce the funding for education. Soon enough, you will see, Mr. Johnson, just what we are looking for and seen. Just funny. <laughs> anyway, um, so. The next dramatization will be the, uh, something that's been happening recently here in Carroll County, which is the uh, reduction of the funding of our education system and the, uh, call it, culling of the, uh, the education f faculty. Uh, there have been major reductions in the uh, staff of the uh, local elementary schools and high schools. Um, clerical work, uh, counselors, uh, so on and so forth. People have been, uh, teachers even, have been uh, fired because of a, uh, a need to monitor the budget, as it were. 
Okay. So, with that. Hello. <laughs> oh, this is going to be very fun. Well, we have another presentation, and this one, as I was saying before, is going to be about the uh, education budget. And uh, well, you'll see. So, uh, how is the education of our children going these days? Well, sir, as the uh, superintendent of schools, I can tell you right now that uh, it's going phenomenally. We've reduced the budget of the school system to about a million dollars, which is unprecedented in our history. Um, it's, it's a glorious day, sir, glorious. Um, well, how did you go about doing that? It's a pretty drastic reduction of our uh, funding. Well, at first, we, uh, you know, we got rid of all of the people who were really just unnecessary, sir. We got rid of uh, about 90% of the, uh, the, st the exterior staff from the teachers. And we got, a, we got rid of about 90% uh, of, the, of the teachers themselves as well. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> How did you go about removing 90% of these, of these uh, different staffs. I mean, how are you going to teach the children? <laughs> what? Sir, we, uh, we've taken care of that. They're all on computers now. Uh, there's no need for teachers anymore. We just have a series of computers. They're all just hooked up to the computers. And um, our staff, uh, very, very comfortable with this, I think. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a very positive experience. Oh, but uh, um, I. So you're telling me that all the kids are just hooked up to computers and that's, that's how they're learning? I mean, is that, is that going to, does that work? Uh, st studies, studies have shown that, uh, yeah, children, children are very uh, receptive to, to playing on computers. I mean, uh, uh, using computers for their learning. Well, I, I, I just, um, okay, uh, I, I'll take that for what it is for right now. But um, so you're telling me that you only have one person doing all of the jobs of the, don't you think that's a little much for one person? <laughs> oh, oh, well, that, that is a good question. That is, uh, that is a pretty good question. Um, I personally have no real uh, affiliation with this. With this uh, he's actually used to be the janitor. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's doing a great job. He's doing, uh, he's doing, he's doing a good job. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I'll take. I'll, once again, I'll take. I'll take your word for it. Um, so, what does he do exactly? Uh, I, he does all the paperwork. Uh, you know, he, he signs all the forms, and uh, you know, he doesn't actually work in the school facility itself. So um, he's actually working from home because. Uh, well, if he weren't, he would not have any time to uh, be out of the school because of how much work he's doing. Um, that's something we're, we're looking into. We're trying to find out a way to you know, bring him into the school so he has some kind of maybe living quarters or something. But uh, you know, that's, that's how, it, uh, how it pretty much works. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so you're telling me that the children are at the school, but no one's looking after them? Is that what you're telling me? That the children are just left to their own devices once they're at the school? Uh, yeah, pretty much. But there are robots that are uh, keeping track of them. Uh, a lot of cameras, um, a lot of different kinds of surveillance methods. So uh, they're, they're fine. <laughs> Trust me, we have, uh, we have people watching them all, all, all around the clock. It's, uh, it's totally secure, totally safe. Totally safe. Um, they have the, the freedom and the security that uh, America's known for. So that's, that's all that's really important. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's the really important thing. It's not, it's not really about the children anymore. It's about, uh, you know, keeping up with the paperwork. <laughs> Don't you see? <laughs> We're living in a new world, uh, a brave new world, sir, where Really, it's all about the money. I can't say that I disagree. I mean, our modern times, you know, it's uh, very important to have safety and security over, uh, 
uh, well, anything else. So, <laughs> um, wow, I think you're I think you're doing a great job here. Uh, I really I think this is uh, this is going to be a very positive and very brave new world that we're creating for ourselves. So, well, I hope that you enjoyed my uh, interpretation of the direction that we're going in. Um, Perhaps there's a little bit of explanation necessary here. Um, if you haven't read A Brave New World, uh, I highly suggest it. It was written by Aldous Huxley. And uh, it envisions a world very much similar to today. Basically, uh, they had something called hypnopedia, which we call television today, which uh, repeats different phrases and terms uh, in order for the people who are listening to them to be uh, sort of entranced by it and uh, repeat what they have been told. <laughs> This is basically the same thing as television, and uh, I think that anybody who has read A Brave New World will agree that uh, this, this interpretation is pretty much the world that we're living in today. Um, pharmaceuticals have pretty much replaced any or all means of a sense of normalcy. Instead of Instead of dealing with your problems, uh, instead of uh, living a healthy lifestyle, people will take pharmaceutical pills. And, of course, if you feel sad or depressed, we have things like Zoloft, Paxil, and, uh, and a, a bevy of other forms of medication for you to take so that you don't have to feel feelings anymore. Uh, the reality is, is that uh, sadness is not depression, and happiness is an equally important emotion as sadness. Sadness and happiness complement and create one another. If we do not have sadness, we do not have life. And boredom or depression are completely separate emotions from sadness and happiness, if that is a polarity. Depression or boredom, as is a kind of mild form of depression, is actually a creation or a manifestation of your or my complete inactivity or non-productiveness. Really, the greatest thing that we can do for ourselves in the modern day world is to turn off the television and put our hands into the soil. Reality will tell you right now, as you, as you perceive it, that as you are watching me on this television screen, you are not happy. You are sedated. The real thing that humanity needs to wake up to is its own enslavement. And we are living in times where more and more our overall enslavement or occupation is occurring all around us, whether it be because of the NSA or the FBI, the IRS. All of these different agencies are constructed for the purpose of rooting out, seeking out, and punishing wrongdoing. Name me one just one, that seeks out and rewards good behavior. This is a tragedy. America has been lost because of the aristocratic takeover of our government. It's been said by Thomas Jefferson that there is really only two political parties throughout history. They are the Democratic and the Aristocratic parties. The Democratic Party believes that uh, the power belongs in the hands of the people to control their own lives and to rule themselves though they may not be the most wise depository of law and government, 
they are the most honest. And in the aristocratic form, the belief is that the people are too foolish, too ignorant to control and rule over themselves, and that the power must be de derived from a aristocratic or special elite source from the top. Now, democracy is not perfect, and aristocracy is nowhere close. The balance that we can seek would be something like a, a democratically elected aristocracy, wherein heredity has nothing to do whatsoever with that power structure. Interestingly enough, if you look at the uh, genealogy of the presidents, most of them are related in some way, shape, or form, and that most of those presidents are also related to royalty in Europe. That being said, I believe that it's very important for us to understand the nature of our government and to explore or critically scrutinize the current form to which we are accustomed. And I believe that at this point in our history, more people are awake than ever before. But those people who are awake seem insane to the rest of society. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the saying or the phrase that uh, being well adjusted to a sick society is no measure of good health has not been transmitted to enough people in our society to recognize that maybe their well-adjusted life is actually more of a symptom of a greater insanity that pervades our society. In my view, the greatest thing that any one human being can do for another is to pull them from their sleeping mind into a state of critical thinking. Critical thinking will be in our future and in our present even the key to unlocking the new renaissance. Script your definite new! This may be a hoity-toity gobbledygook type idea to some people, but believe me, this is very important and history will show that there are specific conditions that can manifest a renaissance. Those conditions are usually very difficult to achieve in a society that is completely asleep. Art, culture, and the temperance, charity of a enlightened being cannot be recognized as good in a sick society. They can only be recognized as foolish. And of course, the fool suspects the wise man of being a fool. To stupid people, smart people are crazy. Scripture <laughs> definitely do! And with that, all I have to say is I am crazy. Scripture definitely do! I'm crazy! <laughs> <laughs> I am Matthew P. Holbert, and I'm a goof. Um, I just want to communicate to the people at home that uh, I, while I may not be a conventional, ordinary, conservative uh, person, I am a character. I am somebody who loves humanity. I'm somebody who cares about our future. I'm somebody who wants to see your children prosper and grow as dynamically and awesomely as possible. I think that the potential of the human race in our time is the greatest that it's ever been. But I think that there's also kind of a fork in the road that we are headed towards. 
A lot of people in my generation, and I'm 25, people who are even in their 30s and so forth, don't believe that it's right to have a child in our times. And that's pretty messed up uh, if you really see that that is the case. Um, and this is just from my experience. People think that it's, this is not the kind of world that they want to bring a child into. This is, uh, this is bad, people. This is a very bad situation to be in. When humanity doesn't believe that it is a time or place for having children. Now, I'm sure that this has been the case, perhaps, throughout the decades, but uh, we're living in times that are very different from any other, where surveillance is becoming more and more prevalent, where every day there is more and more violence. And though it may be a, uh, a, a heuristic of, of sorts, where we just think that there's more violence, where it's just being covered more frequently by the news media, where there really isn't an actual increase in violence or in shootings than ever has been. It's just that there appears to be. Now, either way, America is the forerunner of violence. Look at our television and movies. Violence is everywhere. The television itself is our political, our, our new religious preacher. Regardless of whether you're a Christian or not, and regardless of whether you're an atheist or not, we have a new religion in our society today. What used to be the tallest buildings in medieval times, the church, what is today? the tallest building. Banks, financial institutions are the new church of our society, the new temple. And what is their symbol? The dollar bill is their cross, their symbol of power. And what is their preacher? The television is their preacher. Is it possible that we live in a time where the social norms are the new despot, where the psychologists are the new philosophers, and that science is the new religion? I believe that there is a great amount of harm that comes from this polarization and that there needs in our time to be a bridging of the gap between science and spirituality, between male and female elements. Masculinity and femininity must be merged. The mind of left and right must come together. Intelligence and emotion, mind and spirit must become joined. This is the great challenge that faces humanity as a whole and has always faced humanity. Those people who bring those components, those elements together are seen as prophets, sages, leaders, and great men and women throughout history. To come together, regardless of political party or ideology or religious belief or whatever, we need to come together because the reality is we are a losing team in the struggle for our, for our government and our society. We are the losing team. We are the have-nots. 
No matter who we are, no matter how wealthy we pretend to be, we are on the losing side of an uphill battle. And the easiest thing that we can do to begin this struggle, to begin to win the battle for our supremacy in the game of government and finance, is to turn off the television and put our hands into the soil. Unfortunately, because of the times that we live in and because of the, sta the state of our education, on average, people are unaware of the fact that there even exists such a drastic discrepancy between the classes. The 0.01% own f more wealth than the lower 40%. This may not mean anything to you, but it basically means that these people have so much more wealth that it is impossible to really even convey the numbers. It's a sad world that we live in if we are unwilling to change it. If we are willing to change our society, we can have an effect. We can be the change that we want to see in the world, but only if we have the will to do so. It takes the strength, the courage, and the will to do so to change our forms. We cannot be afraid of the way that things have become. We cannot hold ourselves hostage in our own homes. We cannot live without living, without growing, without progressing. If we do that, we will be what our country has become, stagnant. When a country, when anything, becomes stagnant, it is truly dead. The only true death in life is stagnancy. And so, what are we left with? We're left in an anti-society. Who in our times is the Antichrist? It's not Barack Obama. It's not any man or woman. It's not the president. It's not the prime minister. The beast in our society today is the corporation, the conglomerate, the many-headed beast that emerges from maritime admiralty law, the, the law of the ocean, the law of water. The corporation is the beast of Revelation. And its eye peers in at you from every corner. Google is sort of the, the eye, if you will, of the beast. And the internet is like a web, a spider's web, through which that great beast can come and approach you. We live in times that are very significant. If we have the eyes, if we have the eyes to see, we can understand that there is only one answer or solution to this problem. And it is not the forms to which we are accustomed. I can grant you that. I can assure you that it is not the forms to which we are accustomed that will grant us this freedom, this new renaissance. If anything will save us, it will be our unity. Love is the key. Critical thinking is the way. And peace will be the outcome. Thank you. Love and appreciation.